Over the past decade, investments have poured into large resource and infrastructure projects across Eastern Africa. Many of these are located in remote rural areas, in places where the state has had little presence and where there were no global capital investments before. Turkana County in northern Kenya is one such place. Dust rises in the trail of a lorry, navigating the crumbling remains of the main road that bisects Lokichar, the center of southern Turkana, 500 kilometers from Nairobi in Kenya's far northwest. The dilapidated state and dangerous condition of the road has come to epitomize the neglect and marginalization of this remote corner of Kenya. It is a place that was of little interest to either the state or multinational companies, at least not until recently. In 2012, commercially viable oil reserves were announced by Kenya's Minister of Energy under the rangelands east of Lokichar. This is an area long inhabited by pastoralists. Keeping livestock has been the mainstay of Trakana's economy, the backbone of local livelihoods. Since the discovery of oil five years ago, over 30 exploration wells have sprouted across the South Lokichar Basin, drilling happening cheek by jowl with the tending of animals, charcoal burning, and fuel wood collection. Residents recall the significance of oil operations since 2002, a period that has also seen the introduction of universal primary education, devastating livestock losses, an influx of internally displaced people following Kenya's contested December 2007 presidential election, and the introduction of devolution in 2013. This illustration depicts protests in October 2013 organized by parliamentarians to pressure Tullo, the largest oil investor in the area, to create more local work and tendering opportunities for local companies. They also recall the year of straight roads when contractors extended a network of locally used small roads that cut through the bush connecting different oil sites. The sprouting of oil wells is just one recent development that is changing life in Lokichar. Turkana have long insisted on a degree of separateness from Kenya. Yet small town life in Lokichar and other Turkana towns is starting to resemble that of towns elsewhere in Kenya where it was once marginalized from the rest of the country. Mobile phone coverage was introduced in 2007, when the current Turkana County Governor, Josephat Nanak, was running for the South Turkana parliamentary seat. Nanak, or Nokia, as he is nicknamed by many residents, handed out Nokia handsets to supporters during his campaign. Mobile network coverage has ushered in the introduction of banking and money transfer services. Even in outlying small settlements, such as in Nikukulas, there are signs of changing life all around. The smartphone has become as commonplace in Turkana's small settlements as buying sheep, water pumps, or smoking cookstoves. Parents connect with children in distant boarding schools, and women traders speak with suppliers in larger towns. Solar panels power lighting in schools, enabling children to study at night, as well as small businesses where locals gather to meet and socialize. Satellite dishes beam news, entertainment, and Premier League matches deep into the pastoral countryside. All of these changes suggest ways that Turkana is being encapsulated into Kenya and East Africa's wider lives. In 2017, workers began erecting poles and laying cabling in Lokichar as part of the area's electrification. Visiting in July 2017, at the height of his re-election campaign, Kenya's president, Uhuru Kenyatta, opened the $17 million Lokichara substation. Meanwhile, the area's growing number of businesses, guest houses, cafes, bars, and video halls prepare to connect along with the town's wealthier residents. At the Jam City Bar, the town's young people, along with local oil workers and other contractors, unwind. With temperatures nearing 35 degrees most days, the town springs to life after dark. At first, families, friends, and groups of children come out in the early evening to walk the town, visit neighbors and dukas, or kiosks, to get snacks, cups of tea, and cooking supplies. Later, buses passing through Lokichar southwards towards Kenya's highlands stop in Lokichar, creating a momentary flurry of activity. 
Diesel generators at bars like Jam City keep the music flowing into the night. Yet it is the oil finds in the South Lokichar Basin that is set to transform Turkana, its politics, governance, economy, and potentially livelihoods. At a new well pad just north of Lokichar, a rig is positioned to begin drilling. The venture by London-based Tullo, along with Vancouver's Africa Oil, is the largest foreign capital investment in Turkana's history. Since the discovery of 300 million barrels of oil at the Nyamiya Wells, operations have expanded across the South Lokichar Basin, with Tullo estimating recoverable resources of up to 750 million barrels of oil. Operations have yet to move to full field development, which depends on further licensing, environmental and social audits, and financing in the region of 5 to $8 billion. As workers fit spotlights to a fence around a new well pad, so the footprint of oil operations slowly expands. Some critics allege that the oil development in Turkana is tantamount to a land grab, removing tracts of rangeland and key resources from pastoral use, and thereby damaging livestock keeping systems. Yet the infrastructure for oil exploration and appraisal is relatively light. Well pads are generally in the region of 200 by 200 meters. The largest land take is at the village of Kapese on the outskirts of Lokichar, where Africa Camp Solutions, a Nairobi company, established a 2 by 1 kilometer base complete with an airstrip. Experience shows that the exploitation of oil increases the presence of the state along with that of multinational capital at the rural margins. In Turkana, the Ministry of Roads has begun constructing and rehabilitating a 320-kilometer road connecting Turkana's oil fields with a transfer depot in Kenya's western highlands. Many Turkana politicians insist that rehabilitation of the road is a precondition for taking oil out of the area a necessity to redress the region's historic marginalization. Solar street lighting installed by the Turkana County government, a new layer of devolved administration, is another sign of the state's widening presence in the area. Rehabilitation of the road highlights the need for engagement with Turkana's leaders and residents. Tallo and other investors have financed the building of a variety of social infrastructure, classrooms, dormitories for school children, health dispensaries, and a hospital. As part of local deals, they have reached with communities living near well pads to secure a social license to operate. Tallo has negotiated land takes to establish well pads on a case-by-case -case basis with communities, agreeing to fund social infrastructure as well as provide work and compensation in a bid to win local acceptance. Still, community acceptance has proven difficult to secure and is short-lived. At the same time, Tallo has committed to the procurement of goods and services from local suppliers and workers, the industry term being local content, such as by hiring residents from communities near oil wells as cleaners, concrete mixers, or road marshals who ensure that no children or livestock are endangered by passing heavy machinery. Yet work opportunities are thinly spread and temporary. In Nikukulas, elders complain that young men abandon livestock keeping to take up positions that lasted only a few months. In Lokichar, stories abound of former herdsmen who quickly spent new wages on drink and prostitutes. Still, Nikukulas residents point to the many homes with iron sheet roofs purchased with money earned from working for Tallo. The rapid growth of Lokichar highlights the growing position of local capital, which is the greatest benefactor so far of oil development. Wealthier Turkana, many with connections in politics or who have worked for international relief or church organizations, have constructed rental housing, guest houses, bars, and restaurants, mostly to serve visitors from other parts of Kenya coming in search of work and business, as well as the staff of larger subcontracting companies. The Black Gold Hotel, opened by a group of elites, sits on the south side of town behind a towering gate and high brick walls. Its tiled restaurant and bar are empty most nights. 
Yet developments like this are an investment depending on the future of oil development. A building boom in Lokichar is one of the early visible impacts of oil investment in the region. Other wealth around town is being created through speculation in land, anticipation of Lokichar's further development as the center of Chicana's oil operations. Fencing has multiplied around town as area residents race to claim plots to develop housing, shops, and guest houses. The growth of the town is happening rapidly and haphazardly, in total disregard of social needs or requirements of safe passage for livestock, outstripping the capacities of local administration to keep up with developing and enforcing town plans. The benefits of oil exploitation are less direct for Lokichar's working poor. The town's petty traders and business owners explain that there is more money in local hands because of the expanding oil operations. Residents with new income and money to spend at local shops, visitors who need places to stay, as well as meals prepared and clothes to wash, and boda boda operators who have more customers to shuttle across the expanding town. These are the indirect benefits of so-called black gold, trickling down in very small ways to the majority of the town's population that is very poor. For Takana's pastoral population, the more things change, the more they remain the same. Outside Nakukulas, which sits atop the 300 million barrel Nyamiya oil reserves, a herdsman waits while livestock feed nearby. In recent decades, many Turkana have been pushed out of livestock keeping, gravitating to Lokichar and other towns in search of work and new beginnings. Still, pastoralism has remained the largest part of the area's economy. The value attached to oil fines has also raised the stakes for political competition and long-standing rivalries between Turkana and their neighbors, particularly the Bokat that inhabit rangelands and mountains to the south of Turkana. Local elders allege armed Pokat used livestock raids as cover to displace Turkana and stake ancestral claims to areas with rich resources inside Turkana County. Christ the Redeemer overlooks Lodwar, the Turkana County capital, from a hilltop on the edge of the town center. The establishment of a new county-level government in 2013 and South Turkana's new oil fines have contributed to complex social changes, diminishing the influence of the church and relief organizations over political and economic life. Many of Turkana's leaders came to prominence through employment and international non-governmental organizations. Oil and county government are likely to give rise to Turkana's next generation of leaders. They will inherit a society with gaping new inequalities created by oil development, characterized by the rapid enrichment for a small elite but few economic benefits for wider society. What pathway will Turkana follow in the years to come? The year of straight roads, recalled by elders in the Kukulis, is a nod to the less direct ways that oil fines are changing life. In the 2017 elections, Turkana's governor Nanak openly sparred with President Kenyatta over the proportion of revenue to be shared with the county level and proposed petroleum legislation. Nanak, campaigning as a defender of Turkana's rightful share of oil revenue, was easily re-elected. While oil fines make the state more visible in Turkana's towns and settlements, devolution has changed the appearance of the state, and many Turkana look to the county government to champion and assert their rights. Yet this is no guarantee that Turkana residents will benefit from future oil flows. The debate on oil is inseparable from wider discussions on rights, benefits, and the participation of Turkana in a global resource economy. It is one playing out in dozens of other sites of resource and infrastructure development in East Africa's rural margins.